Spain's mountains are hugely important to the diversity of the wines that it produces. In fact, Spain is third only to Austria and Switzerland in terms of altitude, so high altitude is really a key part of uh, the wine's diversity. So low latitude, high altitude. But whereas in most European countries the mountains are on the borders, in Spain most of them apart from the Pyrenees are inland and what this gives rise to is a huge varied landscape with lots of rather landlocked areas, different microclimates, different cultures. It gives rise to the diversity, the fact that the mountains are all over the country and inside it. Catalonia, for example, is very hilly and it gives rise to the appellations of Monsan or Penedes. It's an example of how the hills create the appellations. But in Spain, the mountains often don't go right down to the sea level. They stop halfway and form the Castilian Plateau, which gives rise to a lot of high altitude vineyard areas in itself. Well, water buffers heat, of course, so water is essential to the creation of particular wine styles. But here again, we have Spanish diversity because it's got coastlines of two very different seas. We have the very fresh and cold Atlantic, uh, and an example of a wine that really seems to reflect that crisp, fresh quality is Chacali from the Basque country. But then we also have the enclosed, much warmer Mediterranean. And of course, around the Mediterranean coast, particularly down to the south, we see richer, riper styles of wine. And then, of course, we have where the two seas merge. So when we think about Jerez, that's exactly where the Mediterranean meets the Atlantic. So again, lots of opportunities for a variation in wine styles. And then inland, we have the Ebro River Valley, which is crucial to understanding Spain and particularly the evolution of its red wines. So the Ebro River Valley gives us such wonderful appellations as Cariñena and Navarra and Campo de Borja. It's the cradle of Grenache and another very important topic when we think of Spain and bodies of water. This is really interesting because if you think about the classic um, traditional Spanish wines, they're mostly made near seaports, so Malaga, Alicante, uh, Jerez again. Um, but as time has gone by, and the trains in particular have made inroads, if you like, into the more difficult central areas, we see the development of winemaking in the isolated areas inland. And so this has given rise to really what's developed over more recent in the long term, um, appellations and wine stars inland. But to start with, the seaports really ruled the seas and the wine trade. And this is what's so very exciting about Spain for, for wine enthusiasts. There's so much to discover and in some ways the more you go inland or to these undiscovered newer areas or, or new to the world if you like, uh, the more exciting it all gets. So um, isolated areas that have now become areas of huge interest to, to wine lovers are Aribes del Duero, Salamanca, Ribera Sacra in the northwest I went to not so long ago. Fabulous wine region. I, I have to say I knew very little about it a few years ago, but now I find some fascinating wines coming from there. So whatever you think of Spain, move to a different part, go inland and you'll discover something different. A hugely important role is played by, by the level of rain or humidity in each region. And let's not forget that most of Spain is not just dry, but very dry. There's some real arid desert areas. But don't think about it just like that because equally, and again it comes back to the diversity, there are areas that have quite a lot of rain and mist. I mean let's take Rias Baixas to the northwest of Spain, uh, far flung Galicia out into the Atlantic Ocean. And it is the sort of humidity, the, the, the sea spray, the general presence of water everywhere that gives rise to the very cool, green, refreshing Albarinos and other white wines that we get from there. Go down further, much further to the south and the east and you'll find um, a region like Humia and bush vines clinging on to any moisture they can find, really basically growing in, in desert-like conditions. So again, a vast spectrum. Goodness, well, I guess you'd want to go to the more extreme contrasting areas. So the top northwest, not only Rias Baixas, right on the ocean, Atlantic Ocean, but inland a bit, you get Bietho with its wonderful tangy, fresh reds. You can tell that this is the north, that it doesn't get too blisteringly hot here. Um, then the kind of the central plain, somewhere like Val de Peñas, uh, Rueda, uh, central Spain. Um, Val de Peñas giving us lots of rich ripe reds and Rueda surprisingly uh, making aromatic fresh whites, particularly making use of altitude. 
Um, certainly, uh, if you go to the Canary Islands, you'll find an extraordinary contrast between the wines of the different islands. It's generally mild there. They're all on volcanic soils, of course, but each island has its own identity when it comes to the style of wines. So really, anywhere you go in Spain, you will come up with this framework of reference for contrasting and comparing the very different styles. Well, a lot of people associate Spain with the Mediterranean climate. They think of it from their holidays and immediately you think of that area of the Costas and the Balearic Islands. Um, but there are contrasts within that Mediterranean coastline and the islands in terms of styles of wine. So in Priorato, Priorat, far to the north, um, again, you've got altitude being employed to make sure there's still freshness in the wines. But these can be very, very big, big garnaches. You know, big oaky reds need a lot of time to mellow, serious reds. And then as you um, come down the coast, you might come to further down to Valencia and the Bobal grape, um, and then to Yekla, where they make you know, more sturdy reds again. But then on, out on the islands, Mallorca is suddenly um, becoming a much more focus of wine lovers' interest. And you can find whites and rosés and I guess mainly reds in Mallorca as well. So there's a lot going on along the Mediterranean. They're not all the same. They don't use the same grape varieties all the time. And of course, the cultures of winemaking are different in each region. As well as wines that uh, speak very much of one particular area, you have some classic Spanish wines that actually combine several because of their geographical location. So for example, Jerez. As I said, it's exactly where the Atlantic meets the Mediterranean. So there's two influences there down in Andalusia. This goes for all the Andalusian famous dessert wines. And then of course there's Rioja. And one of the many things that Rioja is rightly famous for is its complexity. And I'm interested in the fact that Rioja, the Rioja region sits at the confluence of the Atlantic, the Mediterranean, and the continental climates. It's one of the things that fascinates me about that region.